So hello, and uh, I bet you cannot guess for the life of me where I am. Well, what about if I give you a bit of a clue and that sticky up bit behind me there and a little bit of clue that I haven't got the proper gear on because my gear is all in a suitcase. I'm actually back on the Faroe Islands. Yes, I am back over. Uh, we've come over, I brought Mrs. C with me. I'll introduce you later on and I'll also introduce you to Andre because We've come in over, we've come over to stay with Andre for a couple of days and uh, we've got a flight over from Edinburgh so it made it so easy to come over and to, to get a little, you know, like a short weekend in or a long weekend in rather. So absolutely made up with being back over here. Literally off the plane, we've been off the plane 15 minutes and we've driven down to Gossa, Gossadella, aren't it? We've driven over to Gossadella, which is back at the waterfall. Um, we were here in the beginning of the year. If you haven't seen my videos, I'll put a link up to the videos. We were here in, I think it was April time, April, May. Um, conditions were completely different. Don't know what we're gonna get this weekend. There are little patches of light. There's actually some light over in the, in the sea over there. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna just uh, have some random videos, I think, this weekend, just a, a few different places, and we're just gonna enjoy the weekend. Uh, we're gonna go a few, few little locations that I probably didn't do last time, and hopefully get a little bit more water because it was extremely dry. So uh, I'm gonna kick you off with this one, and uh, I'll speak to you in a little while. I thought I would start off with a little bit of a long exposure. I've got a five second exposure. I put a six stop on the front of the camera and I've also got a polarizer on there as well because it's just making that water really rich, like an aqua color, uh, makes it really quite nice. And the five seconds just seems to smooth all the water off just nicely, just to give you a bit of a texture and you can hear the waves crashing, um, coming down underneath the cliffs. Really excited to be back, I must admit it's, uh, stunning place even now we've been here we've got a little bit of cloud just rolling over the top of the hills as well so you never know what's going to happen hopefully i was told last time i was here you get lots of different conditions in 5 10 15 minutes well last time we didn't we just had sunlight all week um so i'm hoping to get some rain and snow and uh, andre shaking his head he's like no 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 <laughs> but yeah we could do it some nice uh something a bit different a bit more interesting but for now i'm gonna keep that one and I'm going to put the long lens on I want to try and few little detail shots because it's something I don't do and I like to make the most and try and get a few detail shots as well this time. So we are still here waiting. I've got the long lens on still and I've not moved the camera so I can do a little bit of Photoshop trickery and try and paste the birds back in. Because what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get some movement in the water. So I've got a, uh, my ISO is up to about 640, up to 1000, depending on what's going on. I'm waiting for a little bit of wind to catch the actual waterfall and blow it sideways. It's giving us some loads of character and texture, but the light's just starting to pop out. And if you really look carefully on one of these images, and I'd like you to comment and let me know if you can see it, there's a slight rainbow effect in the bottom. Now this is inspired by Mr. Michael Shaneburn. Uh, I watched one of his recent videos and he got some spectacular 
absolutely spectacular photos. I want to show Andre them later on and get his juices flowing because once he sees them, he'll be fixed on it. Um, but yeah, I need a longer lens and a faster shutter speed. But this is really uh, a full frame camera job because you get that much better contrast and clarity. Um, I, I'm getting a little bit of grain because obviously lifting my ISO up a little bit. Oh, that's beautiful. I like that. It's like a little dancing fairy, it's like a big dress. So yeah, I'm just, just looking and just, I'm going to put up several images with the different style and look to the waterfall because just a little bit of wind gives it so much more character. I've got seven, yeah. Seven. Yeah, I can, I, I, I can do seven. I'm just talking about bracketing shots and how many shots you can bracket because Denise's camera set up for three and I always shoot five, so I've always got two fox over and two stops under. Here she is, look, say hello, look, Mrs. C. <laughs> Old Viking, I brought her back to her roots land. So she's uh, saying that, you're gonna offend, actually, you might offend people. I won't offend anybody, it's fun. And Andre's hiding behind me, he's, he's down there, there he is. There he is, he's hiding, there he is. <laughs> You'll, cause you'll see plenty of them too. Um, we just had a nice little bit of light as well up on the tops of the mountain. So I went wide and got a wider shot and trying to wait for the waterfall to spread. So I think that's about it. We've uh, been here for half an hour, even though you can spend a lot longer, but we can always come back. And uh, my battery's going low on the Osmo. So I need to shut up and uh, go and find something else to take pictures of. I did a dedicated video but I just wanted to do a quick interruption to this video because I just need to get a little bit more uh, traction on the video uh, basically it's a light that you use for camping it's got a hook on it so you can actually hang it up and it's a split hook so you can hang it on trees and stuff like that uh, so you can hook it onto most things um, it basically opens up and what this does if I can just push the button in it opens up and it splits into two it's like a little spaceship type thing and this wraps around a pole and you can attach it to a umbrella pole, a tent pole, um, probably your tent legs, or you can hang it up from your inside of your tent, camping. It's all sorts of light. It's a really good light. And it also comes with this little tiny piece that goes on the inside as well. And as I say, if put a link to the dedicated video up in the corner um, on my other channel. Uh, and you've got a quarter inch screw, so you can actually attach it to a tripod. But basically this happens like this. You can wrap it around. I'm gonna use my tripod for a demonstration. Um, and put them down that way. You can wrap it around your tripod and you basically clip it in place and you can see it holds it on. Um, it works on different sizes. So it's got a spring in the middle so you can use different sizes. And then you turn the power on on the side and you get the, this nice little glowy light. You can have this nice warm glow light like so. Um, and then you can also turn it up onto full power and you get this really bright maximum white um, bright LED. Uh, so it's, it's a really, really good, powerful, strong light for using for camping and stuff like that. If you want to watch any more about this, uh, check out the YouTube channel, um, Van Life Photography Gear, which is my other channel, and uh, it'll be on there. Ciao for now, see you soon, and uh, back to the video. Do you know what it's like when I'm out with Denise? Now she's got someone else giving her, backing her up. She's like, I'm a professional, I've got my camera handheld, I don't need a tripod and all that. You know what it's like? And Andre's playing the game. What I've got, I'm going to get so much stick. Um, we've come to, we've come to another little spot. Um, I haven't taken this before, so this is quite nice. I've got the polarizer again on because the sky. I'm going to take one actually. I'm going to take one without the polarizer on. I'm going to show you the difference on the water. Uh, I've not got no light on it at the moment. I'm waiting for the light to come in. But this is a shot without the polarizer, and this is a shot with the polarizer. Now I don't know which one I prefer because the one without actually looks quite. There's some light coming in, it gives it a bit more contrast. 
Um, but I'm just waiting for a little bit of light to come through if it can. If it doesn't, it doesn't matter because I've got such a dramatic looking sky and I've got Dragonair over in the left hand, sort of up in the left hand corner. But it's all about these houses with the grass roofs. And Andre was saying sometimes you have to cut the grass on the roof. And he says sometimes they put the sheep on the roof so they can actually eat the grass. <laughs> it's just insane, absolutely insane. But for, for an aesthetically pleasing image, it's amazing because you've got these beautiful houses on the right hand, bottom, lower, right and thirds. You've got the sea running through the middle. You've got these mountains in the background on these little islands. And yeah, it's just stunning. It's got a beautiful sky, really moody and atmospheric. If we get a bit of light coming through as well, it would absolutely nail it. But it was here five minutes ago, so we'll just hang around for a little while and see if we get a bit of light. But it's going to be a very shotgun sort of a uh, few videos from the fairies because I'm not planning on being in one place for too long. I'm just going to go to different places. Andre's going to drive us around and free us. You know, just we're going to stop and just get a few different shots that you wouldn't normally get as a tourist if you like. more like what I was explaining or got told to expect from the Faroe Islands. This is really windy. Denise is hiding behind me. She sees here. Andre is jumping up and down because he's freezing. I've got the wind in my face and it's really, really windy. I'm looking at the witch's finger or part of it from where we are at the moment. And uh, I've already taken a few shots because I wanted to be quick and try and get them before my face went numb. But the temperatures at the moment are, well they told us it was seven as we got off the plane. And uh, it's a lot less than seven now, so it's definitely dropping. So this is going to be the last one and I'm going to check out for this evening. This is going to be a minimal shot as well. I'm just going to pop this one on because I like the island out to the side. And uh, then I'm going to get some tea and make a plan for tomorrow and make a proper video. So let's just get this shot shot. It's just a case of being here and, and getting these images. They look really good on the camera, they really do. I might even take a bit of a pan over this to see if I can stitch it together if it works. It's a bit of a rush job, um, but I think it's worth the rush job if it works. I'm just going to go one more wide shot on this. So thank you very much for watching. We are on the Faroes for a few days. Please do like and subscribe. Check out the videos on even see you beyond the screen. And uh, we will see you sometime tomorrow. So enjoy these last couple. See you soon. I know it's rushed as well, I know it's rushed, but we're about to get done. Yeah, proper atmospheric images with the polarizer on. Absolutely.